there's at least three major vaccines being accelerated for India. I think the the uh, the tough parts are going to be one quickly being able to disseminate the vaccine. But there's going to be a couple of other issues. One. There's a lot of misinformation being put out there by anti-vaccine activists that are trying to make the claim that vaccines are not safe or adequately tested for safety. And now they dominate the internet. Uh, this is a movement that started in the United States uh, and is uh, really a a expanding uh, aggressively. And so, and they target me quite a bit. So we'll have to figure out a way to counter uh, that. Uh, and also, uh, remember that vaccines may vary in their level of their ability to protect. Some may only partially protect, in which case we're still going to need masks and contact tracing. And so sending that message that even when vaccines are deployed, we'll still need additional public health measures to ensure the safety of the population. I think those are going to be the two toughest things to overcome. You know, India is, is a nation that uh, has done overall pretty well with vaccinations, you know, working hand in hand with uh, the Gavi Alliance, the Gates Foundation, uh, the uh, World Health Organization and UNICEF overall. India does uh, pretty well considering the depth and breadth of poverty uh, in, in its population. So yes, I think they'll be able to build on, on that infrastructure. I think the bigger question is, this is an opportunity for India to assert itself on the world stage, on the global stage, as one of the world's large vaccine manufacturers. And uh, whether these big uh, Indian uh, biotech pharma companies, uh, Serum Institute of India, Bharat, Biological E, a couple of others, uh, whether they can also help vaccinate the world. And I think this is an opportunity for India to really show some national pride, not through military, uh, through its military, but through for a peacetime uh, show of force. And uh, that would be really very moving and, uh, and game changing, I think, for the world if India could take on that role. As I indicated, the vaccines will vary in their ability to protect and some of them may not protect completely. They may be partially protective. We don't know which ones, but if that's the case, there still, there still could be virus circulating among the population. And so we'll still need masks and contact tracing. I think too often vaccines are advertised as some kind of uh, uh, miracle or magic solution. They're important, but to remember that vaccines are companion technologies to help with public health. They're not going to replace public health. The Russian vaccine from Gamaleya, we have very limited data. There's one published paper on the phase one studies. It's looking okay, but you know, it's, it's probably not going to be any superior or better than the other vaccines using the same technology. So for instance, the Serum Institute of India is producing a vaccine with the similar adenovirus-based technology. I don't see the advantage of <coughs> the Gamaleya vaccine same with BioE, they're producing several vaccines. I don't see any advantage of the Russian vaccine over these. So I don't think India will necessarily need that Russian vaccine. It potentially could be, it depends on how the EUA mechanism works. For instance, here in the United States, we've never done an EUA for a major vaccine for the American population. So. Many in the scientific community don't know what that really means. And so uh, you can't really, you cannot really comment on the EUA mechanism per se, because the EUA is what you make it. And, uh, and that's going to be the, the tough part is even if it is done through an EUA, making certain that it closely approximates the full approval process. I do not think we're going to need human challenge studies. I think we're going to get enough information on the performance of the vaccine from uh, because we have so much virus transmission in places like India and the United States and Brazil, where these vaccines are being uh, uh, evaluated. And there's enough transmission that we can evaluate how effective the vaccines are compared to placebos. 
without the need for human challenge studies. So right now, I do not see human challenge studies on the critical path uh, for vaccine development. We're already seeing a significant number of Americans are refusing COVID-19 vaccines. And what's happening is we're now seeing the rise of a global anti-science movement. And I've just written about this in an article in Microbes and Infection and working on some other articles as well. I'm extremely concerned and I'm one of the number one targets. Uh, they call me the original gangster villain because I have a daughter with autism and I wrote a book, Vaccines Did Not Cause Rachel's Autism. So uh, this is a real, real problem and, and it's going to affect India and we're going to have to need global solutions to tackle it.